listeners, just want to do a brief introduction before we jump into the podcast. Uh, this week, we welcome Corey Brown of NoTrouble.com. If you're familiar with the Base Nerds, you're almost certainly familiar with No Trouble. Uh, if you're not, it's, you know, Base Players Paradise website kind of thing, an aggregate of uh, videos, reviews, publications, articles, all the fun stuff uh, happening across the world in the base world. So um, recently, Corey put up a GoFundMe to help secure some funds to build the website, keep it going, and uh, I immediately jumped in and threw a few bucks his way and then uh, decided that it would be a great idea to have Corey come on the web on the podcast and uh, kind of talk about the past, the present and the future of no trouble.com. Um, right now, Corey is at uh, just about $12,000 of a pretty modest $15,000 goal. And um, I'm hoping that you might have a few spare few dollars to throw Corey's way. Um, you can, if you're interested in donating, I'll put a link below, but you can also go to notrebel.com slash support, and it will take you directly to the GoFundMe. Um, if you're tight on funds and nowadays things are a little up in the air, maybe you can do a share or like it and help kind of spread the word. Maybe get some of your musician buddies to, to donate. Um, with that said, let's jump into the podcast. Corey Brown of notrebel.com and the Bass Nerds. All right, awesome. Well, I guess we should just get started. We are the Bass Nerds. I am Jody, and this is... Mark. And we are the Bass Nerds, and today we have a very special guest, Mr. Corey Brown, founder, editor, guru over at No Trouble. Yay! Welcome, welcome. <laughs> I mean, I keep forgetting to bring that uh, instant rap air horn. <laughs> yeah, I... I I thought I brought it. It's it might be in this room somewhere. I'm not sure. Beep, 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 beep. Um, but just, just uh, edit it in. Yeah, we'll <laughs> do it in post, right? And now, uh, there we go. <laughs> got you on the screen here. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, Corey and I met physically at Nam in January of 2020, right as the pandemic was about to pop. Right. And we all probably got sick from it. <laughs> right. Uh, I, Corey was a super spreader. Uh, so we ha- met at the base bash and that was awesome. I think, and you, by the way, I think Dave Avenius was the super spreader. Could have been. Cause that like, from Aguilar. A lot of, I mean, we're base players are a little, you know, we're did you see people. that guy? What? No, I've missed. Oh, that. like, like he got horrendously sick and he was just like standing there. Like he was as white as a ghost like just sweating he's just like i feel freezing but my body's hot and we're all like oh cool you've got the nam funk you know (laughs) and then all of a sudden like everyone else in that booth got really fucking sick yeah (laughs) yeah uh i talked to him like opening day i went there and filmed some like because they had some like limited edition pedals come out that were like all gray instead of like the typical red blue purple whatever angular phaser and stuff like that pedal so he seemed fine then, but maybe he got worse over the week. But I mean, we're thinking, talking January 2020, which was like right yeah. before everything locked down. Yeah. And since then, uh, you know, we've been done some remote podcasting and I'm sure that affected the uh, no trouble world. Uh, how did COVID affect you? And I think that probably would lead us into like perhaps the GoFundMe that I just noticed the other day. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you know, it's the, the the story behind No Trouble was I just wanted to start it, and and really I talked about it for ten years before I did it, um, and and I'm glad I waited because I've been doing web work 26 years now, and you know the tools and the what we had back you know when I first came up with the idea, it would have been really hard to pull off, you know, yeah. when technology really you know in those 10 years went nuts. And so the, the platform available was what made it a lot simpler. Um, but anyway, so 10 years, I wanted to do it. And now it's, it's about to be 13 years old. And, you know, I didn't start it to be a business. I didn't start it to you know do anything, but just it's, it was my passion project. It was, you know, I, I lead teams that build websites all the time. And, you know, while it's not boring content, it's not content that makes me you know, jump up and get excited about. Right. And so, you know, my, my two passions 
you know, we're web and base. And I said, I got to do something. And, um, you know, I looked around and nobody was really doing an online magazine the way I thought it could be done. And, you know, none of them were doing a lot of traffic. And so, you know, there was, there's always part of me that says, don't enter a space where you can't be number one. You know, right. so I wouldn't start a search engine. I wouldn't start a social network, you know, but you know, it was clear, like there's, there's an opportunity here to do something big. And we had, you know, very specific goal. Um, you know, it's, it's ironic that doing something like this, the, the web has leveled the playing field. You know, when we were kids, you know, we read guitar player magazine before bass player and we flipped to the back and read the bass column, <laughs> right. you know, and then bass player came out. And so you waited a month or something and then you read it and you wait another month and you read it. And, you know, they were the gold standard for me. They were, you know, I loved guitar player. I loved bass player. I loved all the magazines I got, you know, um, but you know, the web leveled the playing field for everybody, you know, who could become a publisher in the eighties, you know, printing, mailing, you know, all the graphic design and print production and, you know, photography and, you know, you name it. Um, you know, it was a significant lift to, to do something like that, but the web has made it easy. And so for us, it was, the web has leveled the playing field. For us, we can level the playing field for bass players and feature them. And the only way that was going to work is if we got big. And so, you know, it just worked out you know, we got, we got big. And so when we feature somebody, a lot of people see it <clears throat> and, and we've been able to thankfully, you know, impact, you know, I won't say we changed people's lives, but, but we've helped and we've helped to get people known to other people, you know, well, that's and, um, for sure. How I like first got into contact with you was like, I was doing some live video performances of base centered kind of stuff uh and you were you know obviously no trouble is one of the like leading aggregates of base information uh you know audio video reviews all that stuff so it's it was like all right let me see what i can do if i could get get Corey's attention over here and do some cool base stuff and then uh you know thankfully like every time I would send you something, you'd put it out there. And it always was a huge, a huge boost to uh, get my stuff featured on no trouble. And then you would automatically just see the shares and the likes kind of go crazy. And then the friends following you, like the first video I did was that Cody Wright video. And it's gotta be six years ago or, or longer. And all of a sudden overnight, I all of a sudden have like maybe 20 new friend requests every day for like two weeks yeah, and i'm like yeah. and, I, and i'm one of those people who's like i'm not gonna accept anybody i don't know <laughs> like i don't know you you know but just because i had shot it and my name was whatever hosting it uh all of a sudden i was at, that was the moment in my life where i started accepting friends requests that weren't people i actually knew i was like i felt mm -hmm. bad i was you know part of me was like <laughs> Well, these people want to follow me, be my friend because they want to see what the, what I'm doing. Well, I guess I got to be friends with them. Like, why wouldn't I? You know, these guys are my fans now. You know, so then that was the moment that I was like, all right, I guess I gotta open my friends list up. So, oh, dude, um, the uh, the worst part about that though <laughs> is that <laughs> you like start to see who they really are. <laughs> oh, I've gotten a, a couple <laughs> yeah. of those for sure. Like, yeah, oh. like when like shit started hitting the fan i was oh man i was like i don't really know this person we've never really engaged uh i'm gonna unfriend them <laughs> yeah I, well i you know there was a couple moments during like the not to get away from base but you know political climate where i was mm -hmm. like that i definitely had a couple customers from base club that friended me found me on facebook and whatever and i sold them thousands of dollars in gear and never, you know, we, we were fine, nice and friendly. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, the politics come out on Facebook. Yeah. And it's like, oh, man. And then we end up not at some point, like, you were the thing that would show up on my Facebook that I would kind of cringe at maybe a little bit. And then all of a sudden, I stopped seeing it. And why did I stop seeing it? Because you unfriended me because, <laughs> uh, 
you know, so that I would search like, oh, this, well, I guess that's, it is what it is, you know, that mm-hmm. person, we, we have two different worlds here, but um, yeah, I mean, it was always a big deal when uh, No Trouble shared our stuff for sure. And um, I think it, you know, helped, I wasn't even featured in the videos, you know, I was just recording them. Mm-hmm. And then I know for sure it helped those players who were, were in the videos as well. Um, so, and that would always be a thing too, where like, I would like shoot a couple videos and then like a band would be coming in town and I'd want to record them and then I'd get them over and I, you know, what I would end up doing is often sharing, like sending them the no treble link to give me a little bit of clout, right? Like, listen, our shit's going to get shared over here. Like, this is worth your time, you know? Um, and yeah, that would be the thing. Like, you know, I would, I would get uh, John Ferreira of uh, consider the source. He was like, it's like, oh, I could probably get Corey to share it. And he'd be like, oh, I'm going to get Federa to share it where I'm going to, you know, he's an artist, an endorsing artist over at Federa and I'm going to get Harky. And we all just try to like pool everybody we possibly could to, uh, you know, help make that stuff viral. And it did, it really did was like just a, you know, a rocket ship into, if you did something cool and it got shared on No Treble, it was going somewhere, you know? Oh, yeah. And then I think even at one point, you were doing like i don't know if it was like a monthly roundup of like these were the best performing video top videos of the month Mm -hmm. and then we'd be on that shit right so then it would be like another boost in the ass a round of sharing that would go (laughs) off you know which was 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 great so um yeah i mean that was uh, the you know the big motivation like you've been such a an ambassador for the industry like of course i would like first thing i wanted to do was donate some money to the cause right (laughs) um so what did you see that was missing from the world that you felt like no treble the itch that no treble scratched that other people didn't scratch i think the main thing was i mean so i i have a print background so i'm not like anti-print there's a lot of web guys that are like you know well we're better or we're not better we're, it's just a different era you know sure. so i i'm third generation in the print business uh before before i got into the web um and so obviously i think what a lot of people don't know is the size of a newspaper how many pages or the size of the magazine is how many ads are sold it's not how much news there is Mm -hmm. sure and so you know bass player had his page count you know guitar player had his page count and so but it's finite it's it's like you know, we have to ship this once a month to people's homes and to the stores where you used to buy magazines and whatnot. And it's, you know, we had this many ads sold. We had this much pages for editorial and this much room within the pages for editorial. And that was it. And so, you know, that model doesn't work real well where you say, I want to cover as much and as many people as I want to. And so the web doesn't have a page count. And so, you know, we, we work hard to push content out every single day. We don't miss a day. It's three to four pieces of content per day. Um, that's created new. And so, you know, that, that certainly affords us the ability to, you know, it's, it's the videos, it's the reader spotlights. We've interviewed readers. We've, you know, featured their albums. We feature their books if they've written them. Um, so it's not limited to one category. It's, it's just, we, we want to be open, you know, to bass players that say, if you have something to share, send it to us. Right. Because we don't have that page count restriction. And we have slots for different kinds of content throughout the week. But um, outside of that, you know, there aren't really rules as to how many stories we can publish. And so that's where I think, you know, in a lot of ways, we're not different than a traditional magazine. You know, we have interviews, we have news, you know, we have um, lessons. We have, we don't do a lot of reviews, but we've done them. So we're, you know, very similar in that regard to a traditional print magazine. But like I said, you know, we, we can go much, much further um, because, because of that limitless page count. Right. Now who, I know there's you and Kevin <clears throat> and like, how big is the no trouble machine? Um, so I, I would say we're probably maybe 10, you know, regular contributors. Um, You know, Kevin and I really run it. Um, 
And we had uh, uh, we had Damian Erskine for ten years. He did the Ask Damian those, column. Yeah. Um, poor guy was you know by the end of it he's getting super stressed. He's like, I'm not getting any new questions. I've answered you know ten years doing it weekly. And you can imagine like. Right. I remember him posting on Facebook like, "What do you guys want to know?" I'm like, right. r- and basically saying what you just said. Like, I don't know what else to write about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, looking for suggestions, you know. Yeah. And, and Ryan Medora has been with us for, I think, eight years now. Um, and so she's done all kinds of things uh, with us. Um, we've got Rich Brown now, which is like huge for me, um, yeah. if you're familiar with him. Um, just a tremendous educator. And so he's doing a lesson. Ryan's now doing a lesson uh, as well. Um, and we've had Ariana Cap for years doing her lesson. Um, and so, you know, uh, Mitch does the podcast, you know, the group podcast. Um, you know, well, uh, Mitch, gonna, Mitch Joel, Mitch Joel. Okay. For a second, yeah, I was like, I was thinking of Mitch Friedman. Do you know him? <clears throat> oh yeah, I do know him. No, oh, he's not. the best. I love yeah, that guy. Yeah. He, he is awesome. Um, so you know, it's there's been a lot of regular contributors. Um, so we had Donovan Stokes. He did one for years. Um, uh, called uh, The Lowdown with Dr. D. He's a professor um, at Shenandoah University. That's actually, he's the guy that introduced me to Kevin because I was like, I need help. You know, do you have any space students that are like, just, you know, killer work ethic, you know, reliable. And he said, you got to talk to Kevin. Um, and this is from the beginning or like how, how, how far into No Trouble were you at that point? I hired Kevin the first year is probably like, I think we, la- we launched in May and I think I hired him in November of that year. Wow. So it would have been 09. Um, too late for him to go to NAM in 2010. That was my first name. And he was like, he had to sit home with his all bone. <laughs> oh. I've taken him ever since. So yeah. Um, that's actually we that, got that's Joshua awesome Saylor. Ideas. If you're familiar with Joshua Saylor, he he does videos for us. Um, and you guys, I'm sure know Biani. Everybody knows Biani, especially yeah, in he's Chicago. Been on the podcast he's the best. a bunch. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's he's on the board. Um uh, and he's he's doing some content. Um uh, Tim Fletcher does um, transcriptions for us. Um, and so we've had Josh Cohen do a, a lesson series. Um, we've had Rufus Philpot do a lesson series. I um, want to make sure I'm not forgetting anybody important. They're, they're all important. Um, but on our contributors page, you can see we've had just over 13 years, a ton of like guests, contributors. Right. Um, oh, the, the most recent kind of addition was uh, Brittany Frankovich, who you may know. Um, she wanted to do um, an interview series called Women in Base uh, or Wonder Woman, Women in Base. And um, uh, so um, I certainly didn't want to, you know, even attempt to do something like that <laughs> with a bunch of guys, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I'm, I'm really, really pleased with how she's approached it, how the guests, have, you know, have been, you know, they've been, there's some videos, some written interviews. Um, and I think that that, you know, it's, it's an inter- interesting perspective, especially for a guy who doesn't think about like the things that I think a lot of women have to think about and contend with. Um, it's, oh, yeah. It's, it's been really well done. Um, so, yeah. I'd, so, you know, Kevin and I run the day to day and that's pretty much it. It's it's very lean and mean, <laughs> but um, right. But we're, right. you know, really we're, we're strong because of, of the contributors. You know? Right. Now, don't uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're you said you had a background in print, but I thought there was like some internet website stuff you did prior to No Treble. Am I wrong about that? Yeah, I mean my my internet my career on the web is twenty almost twenty seven years now. So I started in print in um, 1990. So um, this just it's... in: the internet is not a fad. <laughs> Yeah, so That's a direct I, I launched from my the first West Wing. Web, <laughs> I launched my first website in 1995 as an art director at a catalog company at the time. And the uh, CEO came down and said, we need a website. And I said, all right, well, I'll figure that out. And, right. You know, it, it was the Wild West. You couldn't buy a book on how to write HTML back then. <laughs> yeah. There was no market for that yet. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, so I've been, I've been doing, you know, that much longer than I've done you know, anything else in my career. So did that, that I'm assuming that translated to uh, the growth of No Trouble, like already having a little bit of background in there. Like, did you, 
like when you started it, was it, did, is, is it where you thought it was going to be? Was this a goal? Are you past where you could imagine you went? Like, what was the, the goal when you started this? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I can't say I had a goal of like, you know, we got to be big or we got to hit this number. Um, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm basically like, I, I do two things when I travel. I look at the stats like crazy because the stats tell you a story. The stats yeah. tell you how long did the average person stay on Damien's ask column? You know, sure. did they, did they read it? So if it's like 30 seconds, you know, nobody cares, right. but it was like five minutes, you know, and it was five minutes and five minutes, each one he published. So I knew that was good, but you know, the other thing is you have to read the comments. So you have, you know, the stats tell you a story like a, a ton of people can click on it, but everybody could hate it. <laughs> right, right. And the stats don't tell you that. So I read all the comments. And so, you know, I, I, I think that's I'm, exhausting, I'm, by the way. <laughs> you know, we were talking about the politics. The politics have ruined social for me because everybody seems to be like, I'm just going to say whatever I want. I don't care what everybody else thinks or feels right. or, or whatever. That's, I, I've seen a shift even in like, we're talking about bases here, you know, or we're talking about a video or we're talking about, you know, and, right. and somebody to me, playing a riff, you know? Yeah. And, and to me, this is people's art. Like, do I love everything we publish? No. You know, do I feel the need to slam them? Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because right. it's not my cup of tea. It doesn't matter, you know? And, and the worst thing for me, not to go off on the tangent is you click on these people who are really, really negative. You click on their profile. They're not doing anything right they're not Most producing the time, anything yeah. yeah and and so you know uh, you know that that's the hard part for me like if it wasn't for no trouble i probably would not be on social media right now because right. it's just it's just become accessible you know for a lot of things and how, how can we you know i don't even get it on the political front but it's certainly like you know we're talking about bases and music here for crying out loud you know right it's like yeah, it's uh just scroll on if you don't like it, you know. <laughs> well, so then how much does that I mean if it, so are you still reading the comments or are you just letting that blow over you or do you like still engage? Like where's the the line? Yeah, I, I mean I still read the comments. I say, you know, the COVID era, I used to say the COVID year, which has been over a year and a half now, you know, that we've been contending with this at some level or another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I got really down. I got really down. And uh, so, you know, you got to gotta to protect yourself, you know, sure. stay away from things that make you feel bad. And, and, you know, I was just like, I was off social media in general. I was still reading the comments on, sure. on the no travel stuff. But even that started, you know, make me feel bad, you know, like, just, just the negativity. It's like, okay, you don't like this base. <laughs> Okay, you know. Yeah, good for you, man. <laughs> why don't you just scroll to the base that you like? Mm -hmm. You know, and we've got sixteen thousand articles on No Trouble. There's gobs of bases on there. I'm sure you'll find something you dig. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I never understood that that right. like incessant need to to just shit on everything. Yeah, like I, I it has to be an ego thing or like uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. If like everybody is just like it's the way that you view everything in that kind of Tinder lens where it's like swipe left or swipe right. I like you or I don't, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, there is no middle ground for like, this is cool, but it's just not for me. Or, you know, somebody said, you know, when I, I feel like I try to check myself whenever I'm starting to feel like negative about what is clearly meant to be kind of a positive post, like, all right, Jody, is it because you're jealous? Is it because, uh, you're just hating to hate. Is it what? What's the problem here? You know, why are you hating on this thing? And I try to check myself and go like, Yeah, yeah. what is this person doing actively to hurt you as a person? Right. <laughs> or what is this right. base like builder doing to hurt you as a person? Right. Why? I, I've said it a few times on this podcast that like when I first started doing uh, demos for Base Club, I would get comments of people like hating or you know, talking shit about what I was playing, how I was playing, what I was wearing, you know, you name it. Uh, and 
after a while though, after I got so many followers, like what I would typically do in the beginning is either like, didn't really bother me or I would delete, just delete their comment. Just, we don't have place for you here. Right. Yeah. But then after a while, after like building up a subscriber base, all of a sudden, like other people in the comments would stick up for me. Right. So Mm -hmm. I didn't even have to reply. They would go, you know, kind of essentially like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, like, who are you to tell him what he's doing? Where's, where's your last album come out? When's the last video you put out? You know, it's like that. So I got to a point where I felt like I was being, well defended by my minions and my army but <clears throat> even those even those can get kind of vicious do you oh, see that sure. do you I'm see sure that too Corey? where like yeah. they'll start infighting and then and then all of a sudden like somebody will try to protect you or you know speak up in, in no troubles defense or the builder's defense and then it just gets like equally vicious right yeah, yeah. well there's there's a rule of thumb and this is why i don't typically engage um you know these are trolls and i I, well i do want to say because it's kind of taking a dark turn here a little bit um and i and i was the one who who turned us into that alley um this is not the majority of no trouble readers no trouble readers are awesome human beings as and and that's been reinforced like i can't believe lately but you know this is like one percent I think, you know, but it's, they it's, seem to have is, the loudest voice, you know, the smaller they get, they the louder they get, <clears throat> you know, right. Uh, but there's a, there's kind of a rule of thumb and that is don't feed trolls, you know, right. because they will just keep eating and they want, they want that engagement. And so you can't reason with them. You can't get them to, to apologize or change, you know, right. rarely can you get them to do that. And so I, I do the same as you, Jody, I, I tolerate, you know, we, we don't rule with an iron fist here, but if, if I see routinely people are being over the top, I'll ban them from the page, yeah. you know, because this is my party at the end of the day, you know, and right. you come in and trash the place, you know, we're going to throw you out, you know, um, right. I have a pretty high tolerance for it, but, you know, you, you can't do that. Not on my turf, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, if it gets personal or, you know, just like uh like people some some of those conversations devolve into like name calling and whatever. Mm-hmm. And of course that's like a big line. Um yeah, all right. Well let let's let's talk about something cheery. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, you know, uh I, yeah, I, I, I apologize, see, guys. I, no, well, no, you, no. You, you mentioned that the majority of your fans are and your followers are very positive people in my opinion it's it's pure it seems like no trouble is not very biased and i think that was always by design correct like it, like like it just seems like that you all had your opinions on things and they're in the beginning stages it didn't seem at least like it's been a thing that you had planned on monetizing uh so like all of the reviews and everything were there's no bias there like truly no bias there. Does that sound right? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm glad that comes through because we get accused of this from time to time. Um, you know, editorial and sponsorship are church and state. Yeah. So, right. you know, if, if you, if you see a byline on the treble, nobody paid us to write that. If you see a clear label, it's it's sponsored. Right. And there's no byline, then that's, that's the indication that somebody paid us. And so, and we don't mix and match these things. So we've had, you know, I, I did want to monetize it, not for my personal gain. I've never taken a dime out of it. I've put way more money into it, but I've never, you know, I never intended to, to make it a business of any kind. I did want it to pay the bills, you know, right. uh, its own bills. Um, that's always been the goal. Um, so we've had sponsors and, not many, but the, the, some have asked, and it wasn't over the top, and it wasn't like an ultimatum. They asked for favors, you know, you know I said, you know, in, in, in terms of editorial coverage. Yeah. And, you know, we have, we have policies on what we will cover and what we won't. Um, and so, um, you know, we won't bend. You know, if, if you don't want to advertise because we won't do something that we won't do, and that's cool. You know, right. we, we don't need, we don't want to take your money. Um, so I tell everybody, if you sponsor us, you're not going to get any favors. And if you don't sponsor us, we're not going to exclude you. You know, 
right. we're cover you as, as much as we would you know anybody else. So I mean, um, I think that's what the ideal would be, right? I think that's what everybody would say is like, yes, give us money. Thanks for the support. If you believe what we're doing is worth it, then you should sponsor us if you have the ability to. And uh, yeah, you know, if you want favors, like, uh, I mean, you, they should already be making a product that uh, kind of sells itself. So I feel like mm -hmm. if I, if it were my company and I was, you know, I had a base company or whatever and was having no trouble, you know, sponsoring no trouble. I feel like the product that I would send you to review would all would likely be a good product, right? <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, you're, you're, uh, yeah, you don't want to put garbage out there in the world, right? Yeah. And, um, and I, think, well, I mean, the readers aren't stupid. Volume. Right. And the readers aren't stupid. That's yeah. for sure. Right. They'll, they'll see it. They'll see it instantly or they'll see it over time. One or two, they'll, they'll know. Yeah, um, it's we... it's insulting as a reader. It's just mm -hmm. yeah, right. or yeah. as a viewer as well. That's that's become a topic as, as as well with regard to videos. My my personal uh methods of doing things. I I don't like to shit on stuff. Even a boss like HM two, <laughs> you know, it's got a purpose for everything, and mm -hmm. it's I, I've always found that it's better to focus on the positive aspects of things unless it's just like very clearly built very, very poorly. Right. Um, people will be able to see that and feel it. And if it, like, if it gives you a lot of problems, it's, it's very unlikely or if it's, if it's like prone to giving people a lot of problems, it's very unlikely that I would touch it because I just don't like, I don't want to focus on any of that. I, I think it's important to focus on because somebody designed that thing. Right. Somebody took the time. To well, but there's also a million other pieces of gear out there that are killer that deserve your time yeah and that like instead of messing with the piece of gear that that may be questionable it's like well there's this other cool thing a neural dsp pedal that mark just got that i have yet to play with <laughs> i actually have it right <laughs> here next to me cortex with them uh uh yeah so i'm eager to get my hands on that but um yeah i think like uh yeah, there's a, there's a place for everything. So like Mark said, highlighting, you know, this thing is good for X, Y, and Z. And I feel like that's what I always did with like my own like base club videos. Like, I think this, this thing works really well for X, Y, and Z. Not that you can't do A, B, and C with it, but I think it shines in this area or mm -hmm. if you want really weird tones or you want more vintage vibe or a more modern vibe or you know, whatever. I don't think there was ever really a piece of gear where I was like, this is trash. Mm -hmm. right. I just don't think we came across much of that at all. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. you, you mentioned that your your plans were to monetize the platform just to pay the bills of no trouble so it's basically it's its own efficient thing kind of like what the post office is supposed to be right like uh -huh. the money coming in funds it it's basically like net zero um, non not necessarily like that not to get into the you know the, the, the details i mean it's it's your thing but that that's that's always been the goal with with no trouble well i mean so you know obviously starting it you know, I had to fund it. Um, you know, I had to invest money into getting off the ground. And so, you know, the, the goal was like get it to break even, you know, beyond that, and we could do more things with more money, you know, mm -hmm. but the bottom line was I didn't, I didn't do it to make money. You know, I didn't mm -hmm. do it to be like my part-time job or my full-time job or my empire, or, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't driven by that. And so, so I, I don't want to say like, hey, if if we could figure out a way to be who we want to be and make money, you know, and this could be part of my retirement plan of like tinkering around and just doing a treble, um, you know, I I wouldn't turn that down, you know. But it wasn't it, the intent was to do it and to do it the way I wanted to do it and thought, you know, this doesn't exist, you know. I think there's a shot we can be big. Um, and you know, we can we can shine the light on a lot of players you know around the world um so you know and you know to me the fact that you know, i've had to monetize it you know a year here a year there and all through covid you know um that was always outweighed by people coming up to me at nam or the emails that i get you know which 
you know, to your point earlier, I mean, you mentioned Cody Wright. I don't know how many times. He's probably the, the one name I can remember. Like, how many people came up to me and Am say, I discovered Cody Wright because of you guys. But I hear that all the time. Yeah. I hear that all the time. And, you know, Cody's an awesome dude. We've got to hang with him at Am quite a bit. And, right. um, you know, what you, the videos you sent, Jody, were, were awesome. Um, and so I, you know, I was a fan. That was definitely something I was digging on, you know, right. everything he's done. And, uh, but just to see like, you know, the Wolfpack, you know, yeah. when, when Wolfpack came out, they emailed me and said, you know, like 40% of our CD sales are coming from you guys, you know, mm-hmm. like from links, you know, from your site. Yeah. And, um, you know, you know, but the thing is like, we're doing one thing but it was Joe Dart or it was Cody Wright or, you know, whoever right. it was mono neon. We've been covering him forever. You know, it's, we didn't, I don't know that we did anything for mono neon. You know, I don't want to act like we're just making stars all over the place, but you know, it's, it's helping. It's helping. Yeah. I think, um, I, I think it's totally reasonable to say you've just been that, you know, one of those people behind the ball, helping everybody else push it. Right. Like, yeah, uh, right. And that's huge. And that's why, you know, like when you guys had this GoFundMe, I was like, man, I gotta like, of course, you're like such a part of the thing, you know, which leads me to like, I mean, you're talking about being, uh, you know, cautious to monetize things, but I feel like you guys gotta be having a lot of traffic, right? I mean, I don't know the numbers and you don't feel free to not share those numbers if you're not comfortable sharing them or whatever, but I, it's got to be a lot of people and there's got to be a path like to get to where this is like uh, Corey's retirement fun project where you're like, I feel like you're there. You're just got to connect a couple dots. Like, and yeah. I, I, I don't want that thing to be, I go on no trouble and there's just pop-ups everywhere. Like, I don't think right. that's the path. Right. But there's right. got to be like a unique way to go. Like, this is no trouble. We get X amount of, you know, views per month and our average view time is five minutes and whatever. And that's got to equal money to somebody, right? That's got to equal money to somebody. Or there's like, how do you turn in your, your viewers into like subscribers or like, like you don't have a, um, like an email list, do you? I do. I feel like I don't well, we get have no trouble emails. Maybe I'm just not well, on the list. Maybe I got to get on. All right. So how real do like, you want to get it? But I like, can I'm get just super trying to real think, like, you know, from <laughs> both Mark and I come from these like sales backgrounds, right? Yeah. So like, how do we make this thing, uh, you know, uh, monetarily enough to make everybody happy? Everybody makes a few bucks and the viewer isn't too much kicked in the nuts for it. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel like there's got to be a path. Do you ha- see a path forward, or I, I, he wants to get real? I want to keep. I want to get real. Well, I no, mean, Cor- I, I think I think Corey wants to get real. All right, you can well, see it on his face. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, do you see what's I the mean, path this is forward here? Exclusive. You want you you want the big exclusive? <laughs> yeah, or cutting it. I mean, we don't yeah. have to talk about it. But all right. So here's the thing: we get between two and three hundred thousand people a month visiting the site. Those are return um, viewers or new viewers or just like all together. It's a combo. It's yeah. A combo. Okay. Got it. So if I made a base, an amp, a pedal, whatever, I, I can't, you know, I want to say this carefully because I'm not down on these people. I don't, I don't, I don't understand where their head is, but I can't, I can't for the life of me understand why it's been so hard to get sponsors. Yeah. Um, I know a few things over the years. So when I would go to NAM, and, and I'm not a sales guy, I'm not pushy. I bring little postcards with our stats and, and basically say, hey, this is who we are. If you're interested in talking to us, let me know and I'll email you a few weeks after NAM. Yeah. And so in the early years, all I heard about was bass player. And to me, I was like, you should advertise in bass player, but you should also advertise in no trouble because you're going to get more coverage. Right. So to answer your earlier question, when, when I started, what was the number I want to hit? I pulled bass player's rate card. So they had 44,000 monthly readers. And I was like, holy crap, 
I was getting 60 a day and a lot of them were repeat. <laughs> right. So I was like 44,000. Well, when we hit 200,000, I looked again, they were at like 22,000. And that's not their fault. That's just how the industry went, right? Sure. The, you know, these were very good people. I know a lot of them. I, I think they did a stellar job. You know, it, the landscape was changing. It wasn't their fault, you know. So we were ten, almost 10 times the size of them. <clears throat> And people were still talking about them. And I get it, you know, absolutely. Buy an ad and bass player, but that's not exclusive. You know, it's all these people over here. Right. And so couldn't, couldn't convince them. And, and then I've heard other people say, well, you cover us in gear news and that's enough for us. And I want to say, well, if you want us to continue to do that, <laughs> you know, we got to pay the bills, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and I so, mean, I feel like it's like, hey, we've shared your stuff already. That's got to be worth something already. Like, yeah, yeah. give me something back for that, you know? Yeah. Well, the there there has to be alternative content. Like when you're talking about artists, that has to be the pitch. Then, like, we have this really great article coming out with such and such artist. They talk about your gear a lot. It, um, having an ad right there, like to to remind people of where to get it. Like that's. We're probably going like our average hits are probably you know this much on these kinds of articles. You're going to be, right. want to be part of that, especially because of the click through. We we measure those analytics and you get them you get them back at the end of yeah. that. Yeah. Well, and that's where I think that's where I think we're we're safe and where I'm proud is that we actually we don't sell banners and never would. Um, I I just don't like that game for mm -hmm. you know loading up the page and stuff and. Um, you know, the effectiveness of them versus we, we invented our own sponsorship packages and we've been able to vet them and they're killer. If you want return on investment, they're killer packages. I know I've shared it with, you know, people in the industry and they're like, you're getting these numbers, you know, like email subscribe to the sponsor. And I mean, we had a sponsor say we more than doubled their email list from one campaign. And if I was charging like a, reasonable rate for emails, it would have been three times what we charge them, you know, and that was just one aspect of what we delivered. And so it's in the spirit of like, we're not overloading readers, but they're paying attention. We're not splattering this on every page and the pop-ups and the ads in the background and then the header and sliding down and, you know, the videos are playing, you know, we're not going to do that. We're just, I, I would shut it down before I do that. Um, um, and so, you know, that's, that's reality. So the other thing is we've done well with apparel. Yeah. Until COVID. that's what every YouTuber is doing. Like before we get started with this video, I want to talk mm -hmm. about my new merch drop. Right. Yeah. So what you're wearing, but, by the way, yeah, look <laughs> you at that. <laughs> shirt. what a coincidence. Yeah. Um, well, but you said so, until, until COVID. Yeah. So it's like, Shirts were hard to come by. Now they're sitting on a dock. We can't uh, fulfill, you know. Yeah. Um, and so it messed that up too. So I have all these t-shirt designs we're going to roll out. And uh, all we have right now are the tired classic no trouble tees we've been selling for 10 years. And, you know, I see them all the time on social, but it's like these did real well, but I did it back in 12, 2012 or 2013. They did really well. And I wanted to bring those back. Um, but we've got all these ideas and I think, again, it's like in the spirit of what we do, it's not in your face, but it, it helps pay the bills. And, and we just lost all of that. And I walked out of NAM 2020 with half a dozen, like, I, I'm a pretty good judge of how an NAM show goes in that regard. I walked out with a half a dozen, like solid, like we're going to sponsor the trouble this year. And uh, by March, it was like, yeah, we're going to kind of wait and see what, what this is about. And by June, it was like, we're punting for a year at least. Um, right. Here so all those guys. October. Vanished. Actually, it's November of 2021 right now. Right. You know? So like, well. So, you know, it's it's just, I mean, you know, I don't want to sound like, oh, poor me, because, you know, last year I was I was worried, heck, over all these musicians. And so we, because I'm insane, I, I reached out and said, I have an idea. We had a Zoom meeting with like 75 bass players and said, I want to start a site to promote what you're doing. And so we set, set up a, we built a community site so everybody could submit their CDs and their books and their private lessons and, and all the things they were doing and promoted it. Um, and I got serious traffic, but you know, it was just another kind of like 
spinning up another site, you know, doing all that work kind of thing. And, right. But I, I just, I felt so bad because I had a job, you know, I didn't lose my job during COVID, but you know, I don't, I don't go on tour. I don't play out. I don't, you know, and teach lessons at a store, um, that kind of thing. So, and I, and I felt like certainly this was a horrible time to be promoting t-shirts and stuff to people that were hurting. And so we, you know, we really kind of underplayed all that, you know, for that reason, because I, you know, I felt like it was insensitive, you know, to say, Hey, we're doing a big t-shirt sale, you know, pre-order, right. you know, and, and, you know, you're, you're hoping to make rent, you know, it just didn't seem right. So we, we just said, you know, we're putting all this on hold. Um, What's the name of that page, by the way, that, that, that community community.notrouble.com community.notrouble.com. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that was, you know, there was, there was a lot of things that happened obviously. And uh, we certainly weren't alone and, but it, it was hard and it was, it was really, all of it was starting to weigh on me to where, you know, I, I had come out here about six weeks ago and I said, I've got an idea. It's scary as hell to me. I don't like it. I don't like, I, I've never been the guy to ask for help. I'm terrible at it. I get criticized a lot, you know, because there's a lot of things I should be asking for help, but this, this is monumental. And so I said to Kevin, I'll carry it to the end of the year. We'll do this. If it doesn't work, January 1st, no trouble. At least as it exists, won't exist anymore. And it broke my heart to tell him that because, you know, but I just, you know, I was like, this thing's got to turn a corner one way or the other. And, you know, the real reason for the campaign wasn't to say, oh, now we can cover our bills for the next 12 months because it was stupid because in a year. And I don't ever want to do this again. I don't want to ask readers for money again. You know, I need to hire somebody and I'm putting together a job, you know, description, you know, to say, I've, I've got 30 ideas on my whiteboard. I've got zero minutes to do them. Right. And so, um, you know, we, we've got to, we've got to monetize it the way no trouble is going to monetize something. And I believe in it. I believe in what we will do and can do. Um, but it can't be, you know, me trying to focus on it 10 minutes a day, you know, it right. needs, it needs more, more, a little bit more behind it. So, um, so I, you know, this past week, man, uh, I, I just can't, and I got to thank you guys again, man. You, you guys brought it still the number one donor on the, <laughs> on the campaign. And, uh, yeah. But, I mean, it, I felt like it was the least, I mean, I, I literally, well, a couple things, you know, I see the, the the gofundme i click on it and immediately like of course i'm gonna donate whatever you wanted money for i was like ah you know it does whether it be no trouble or a new thing you're trying to you want to make some more t-shirts or whatever i was just gonna donate let's be real like you you made more than that in commissions based off of the sales based off of the people who (laughs) found out about base club (laughs) because of something that no trouble had had posted oh for sure i mean it i mean i it helped me you know like an ego boost more than anything. But I think who you really helped were the guys like Cody Wright, John Ferreira, and, and those consider the source and stuff like that. Like they were touring and now all of a sudden 200,000 people who didn't know who they were, know who they were, are. And oh, by the way, they're touring nonstop across the US. So like, I'm sure that well, translated to to ticket sales right up until last year <laughs> well, up right, until right. last year now right. mind you the videos i i said I, that you shared for me were long before covid you know five six maybe even seven years ago and i haven't sent you much i guess i sent you some stuff maybe like two years ago uh but yeah i mean i think it was uh you know i i i'm happen to be personally in a position where my work has been doing pretty well lately and you know, didn't, wasn't a big deal to, to send a few hundred dollars over your way, you know? Um, and I know that's not everybody's case. And I know that like, you know, I've also been the poor musician who needed help or, and it was, it was hard for me to ask for help from anybody. And, 
I feel like I'm in a position now sometimes where I can help other people. Of course, I'm giving an instrument away or whatever to some young up and comer or something like that. Well, you, you know, the, the bottom line is that no trouble has proven time and time again that you all have stayed true to your passions. And that's, you know, bass playing and instruments and gear, et cetera, et cetera. And everybody in our little industry has benefited from what you all do. Right. And, you know, on top of that, you have stayed true to this ethos of not inundating people with all of those ads and stuff that are just frankly frustrating if they're, especially if the layout's really bad, you know, we've all been frustrated with that sort of thing. So in addition to promoting the community at large, which is the most important thing that you guys have done really, really well. And we have benefited the two guys in this room have benefited from, from that. Um, It's just important to keep that thing going. Um, Also, I'm going to make more shit in the future and I want you to share <laughs> yeah. that stuff yeah. in the future yeah. as well. So like, yeah. it's true. The, you know, it's an investment into the thing that has helped me do become, you know, be in the place I am today. And to think I still like it's, it, it's happened the last three or four episodes where I've turned to Mark and gone, like it was a whim that I went to Nam in 2020. Like I wasn't planning on going three weeks prior. Mark is like, I think you should go. We could probably find a way to get you some passes, whatever. And, okay, let's do it. And then I met you out there. Not that we didn't already know each other through email, but it's always nice to meet someone in person, right? Absolutely. Uh, obviously our relationship with Base Magazine, uh, you know, came came about, you know, this podcast, meeting people. Like, it's just so weird that that like just happened sans serendipity uh here we are today but um yeah uh it was a really a no-brainer to donate and i also you know if i'm just being honest here i'm gonna keep it real i felt like you could ask for way more money if i'm being honest like 15 grand didn't seem like very much to me to like keep what sounds like a major player in the base advertising you know ethos out there like you're in my mind one of the I would go to no trouble before I go to bass player like I like your maybe it's because we have a relationship already so I'm just more apt to do that but like you know I was f- following Damien Erskine years ago and then he became a part of no trouble so like you always were kind of that thing that I think the top players kind of gravitated towards anyway um, so I know you know your responses to you know the the GoFundMe have been uh you know, like I, 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 now I know it's okay to ask for help type of thing. And like, it's a really hard thing for you to do, which I totally get. I'm totally on that same page, but like to hear you talk and go, like, I talked to Kevin and said, I'm going to let this thing float till the end of the year and see what happens. Like, I mean, that's like heartbreaking for me to think that like, you're telling me you're getting hundreds of thousands of views of clicks a month. There has, mm-hmm. I think the ever I think the majority of viewers would much rather have an ad or two or what Patreon they have to spend $2 a month for to access your site versus nothing. You know, I think like, I, I, I don't know what more direct way I can say it other than like, I think we would, I, I don't speak for anybody, but everybody, but I think the average listener would much rather have a little bit more barrier to entry or whatever you want to call it than it not exist at all. So, and if you have the stats, like you're getting whatever, eight times what bass player is getting, there's got to be a, a play there. There's got to be like a, I'm going to partner up with someone to sell half of the website, you know, or something like that to there's a path there. I feel like there's a path there and I don't want to see you go is basically what I'm getting at here. So, um, yeah. And I mean, that's honestly why I did it because the two things I hate was asking for help and then shooting that stupid video. You know, like right. I'm fine video chatting with anybody, shooting a video that I know is going to go up on YouTube <laughs> and Facebook. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, 200,000 people are going to see this. Right. Yeah, it's right. going to you go know, on your page. Like, yeah. And uh, so I was like, you know, but I, I felt like, you know, this is a good, I, I described it to somebody and I said, I want to do this and if readers believe in us it'll work and if they don't then it's time and that's that's where i got in my head you know like that's how 
because I floated it because it's too big to shut yeah. down. Right. But, you know, do people actually really care or are they just clicking? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I wanted, you know, I wanted to see like, is that sentiment there? And as, as down as I've been for, you know, 18 months and just kind of like, you know, going through the motions, you know, um, on a lot of things, I, this was so uplifting. I, I can't, you know, and it was the words, you know, that we read the comments that were being left, you know, I mean, the money was, it's been mind boggling. We hit seven, we hit 25% in 36 hours of our goal. Wow. And we hit 75% today and tomorrow is the one week mark. And so, you know, I mean, it's just, it's overwhelming to me what, what everybody's done for us um, here and then the words, you know, that they shared. And, you know, it, I know, you know, Kevin and I are both feeling like really energized by it and want to make something of this, you know, like this is an opportunity. And so, you know, um, well, nothing's guaranteed here, but you, you all have a very impressive, it's not just like, give us money so we can keep this going and pay our staff writers. Like there's, it's, it's more like, of course, like it, it, you're, you're going to put out the quality content that people need to read in a time like this pandemic. Like we need stuff to do. We need stuff to read. You always kept it positive. You've been very artist focused and it, it serves its place in the community. Um, yeah, I, just, I don't really know where I was going with that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, um, I don't know. I, I, I think that, uh, it's just important to, to keep that going, but you all have a really impressive, uh, bit of offerings that you do like for, for, for the sponsorship tiers. And yeah. And so there's some like uh, mentoring type of, there's some classes. that that's impressive that like that there's, there's gotta be, you, you, you all, you probably have thousands of people I mean, like thousands a of subscribers and followers for 500 bucks, who, right? <laughs> who, who will benefit from that sort of thing. And I, I don't know. I mean, it's 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 worth that. Like right there was worth like the top tier package <laughs> like, right. in yeah, my yeah. mind. You know, yeah. people would just I, I, would, I don't know why people aren't just like really jumping at that, especially like the manufacturers and stuff like that. Um, out yeah, there. I think it's really hard for people to kind of get what that is. But, you know, that it's hilarious to say that because. I'm bad at following the rules, you know. I'm bad at, you know, oh, you're supposed to do things this way or that way. So you're um, a bad boy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I like being a bad so, boy. <laughs> I, I, I quite enjoy it. <laughs> no, I quite enjoy being a bad boy. <laughs> yes, mommy. <laughs> so you have what like, Kickstarter. Kickstarter has rewards. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's real clear and it's like you set them up and blah, blah, blah. But they also have, if you don't hit your goal, you don't get anything. Right. Yeah. Right. GoFundMe has no rewards, but you get whatever (laughs) you get. Right. And so I said, well, I want to get what we can get and I'm going to do rewards. And everybody said, you're not supposed to do that on on GoFundMe. And I'm like, I'm going to do it. I don't care, you know, and I, I've got a system down. We don't get the email addresses of the people. <laughs> right. I found that out the night before it went live. Mm. But I knew how to do, do that. You can thank people and they get an email. Got it. So I don't know their email, but I can reach them. Right. Here's my. And so email. for every tier, we have a link to a form. Yeah, a form for this tier, a form for that tier, and so I, every night I sit down and I write a note to every th- everybody with, go fill out this form. People fill out the form. We're putting them up on the supporters page. We're I've got piles of envelopes like this going out every day with the, <laughs> the sticker pack rewards. And, Whoa, um, you know, we're setting up the, the banners and uh, and all that stuff. So. Um, so yeah, I was like, there was, there was absolutely no way I'm going to say, just give us money. You know, I, I have to give you something in return and, and everything we're giving back pretty much would be way more expensive if you, you know, like 
you know, the, the coaching I do is way more expensive. Um, the, you know, the banner ads, the sponsorships would be way more expensive, but, but, you know, it's like, whatever, you know, we're, we're going to do this because I, I have to give something back. You know, I just have to give something back. And, and, um, you know, I, I want it to be like, Hey, if you want your link on no treble and you give us a dollar, your links would be on the treble on the supporters page. You know, um, I, I didn't want to say a, a dollar to nine is no value to us. You know, it's all value to us, you know, because, you know, shoot, if everybody who visited no treble gave me a dollar, I could find a trouble for like four or five years. Yeah. Well, duh. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I did say Patreon. I don't know if you heard me. I did. That I heard that. There. <clears throat> so like, yeah. you know, even if, it, cause there's like some podcasts that I listen to that are literally a dollar a month on Patreon and they just, mm -hmm. it's a numbers game. Right. So, yeah. you know, I don't know if what that means as far as like, are you, do you put exclusive content on Patreon? What does it, what do the people who pay Patreon get access to? Do you put everything behind a paywall? Like, you know, I, I don't know what that is, but yeah, yeah, whatever. I'll, I'll pay whatever it is as long as it keeps no trouble going, you know? Yeah. Um, so but like I said, I, I feel like, you know, readers have given us a runway that I'm so grateful for and a runway, honestly, we've never had, you know, to say, right. This is not money going to the bank so I can pay bills for next year and say, Ooh, right. Hey, remember that thing a year ago? We're doing it again. You know, I, I don't want to do that. I do not want to do I want to turn this into we figure out a way for no trouble pay bills. Yeah. Without having to have tons of ads all over right. the place. Right. And exactly. without having like physical I mean, like you do have physical apparel and product and stuff that eventually could uh fund that, but as of right now, it's just impossible because of the logistics problems and the the, the yeah. supply chain issues that we're we're seeing and everything. Um, yeah, but, I'm not going to apologize for selling shirts and stuff because it's not in your face. And if you want it, go for it. If you don't, yeah, <laughs> but, you know, yeah, that's, that's a great way to monetize things. And, uh, you know, even the sponsors, we're not like, we're just not going to distract you from reading. You know, it, it's right. there, you can see it, but it's not like I got to close windows <laughs> to read the, mm -hmm. the new base story, you know, or read the interview or, or, whatever, or switch whatever. your desktop from your phone. Do. Um, What's that? Switch to your desktop from your phone in order to see it. God, yeah. that kills me. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, I feel like I just got to put it out there that if you're in a place in a year or two years or three years down the road where you were at before, where you're like, I don't know if I can continue to whatever with no trouble, like, please reach out to me. I feel like. I could find a group of people who would want to fucking make that like buy it or like help fund it. Mark's raising his <laughs> hand. Well, no, I, I, I just think it's, an, it's important to continue the sense of community that you have built, right. you know, and one person can, you know, or even two people or however many people are on the staff, it, it can only, you can only do it for so long. And this is clearly a project of passion and it, it just, it's, it's, it's just too important to let, fade away right. it's just all there is to it i mean yeah. the thought like honestly if i think like the difference you know i i don't know how you're going to respond to this but the difference between no trouble ending and continuing after the first of the year was fifteen thousand dollars it's just like there's there's a way to save this man like 15 grand seems like nothing to me for what this this behemoth you know so like yeah. uh, you know yeah like, like i said if you come to a place in the future please reach out we don't want yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll find a way mm -hmm. we'll find a way um so yeah i'm also looking forward to i don't know what my i think mark looked it up what our uh reward is over there at uh do we get a well, shitload guys, of stuff man yeah you get, you get the whole ball of wax everything so. <laughs> well, I, you know, honestly, I, you, I, we may never even take you up on it, but uh, it was. Oh, you got to being a part of it, but bullshit, uh, I mean, dude. I'm gonna take him up on it. I want that fucking web coaching. Yeah, <laughs> you got to keep I, your clothes I, so on I during just... it, Mark. Okay. Oh wait, hold up. It does not say that anywhere. What's that? It, <laughs> he's got to keep his shirt on while you do. And I'm saying it doesn't say that anywhere. 
I'm going to fucking screenshot it right now. Actually, I'm going to switch windows. I'm going to screenshot that shit right now because he's going to fucking change that shit. Don't you dare. Ju- don't you dare try to change that right now. I'm, I'm seriously uh, I'm going on there. No treble. Go dear, fund me. The Corey glamour shot. There it is. Yeah. Fundraiser by Corey Brown. I'm going to the you're not stopped. You can't stop me. It's just it's too late. It's already. Where the fuck is it? See older. I'll send you a screen grab. <laughs> be prepared oh man mark on your uh your coaching thing there it is read more and the coaching <laughs> um yeah wow. no sure required i'm gonna add that tonight uh-uh no i'm fucking <laughs> here i got it no, no no you didn't hear me i said no shirt required oh <laughs> i'm adding that tonight well i'm screenshotting it just in case you have a change of heart so it's been screenshotted yeah <laughs> Prepare to be canceled. <laughs> Don't get canceled here. Don't get canceled here. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about how uh, thankful and grateful I am to, to No Trouble. And I'm excited. So it sounds like you said you're planning on hiring somebody. Are you looking for like an ad sales guy? Or I mean, I know you didn't. It sounds like you don't want to do that. But the yeah. uh, sponsorship bro to entice people to give you money you don't want to do it no no <laughs> so i I'm, I'm struggling with the title you know titles don't mean anything to me it means everything to the people that person is talking to sure right so you don't want to make somebody a vp or something like that this is definitely a part-time you know contractor situation here but you know i figured Let's just call it an operations person. Yeah. A chief um, of operations. Yeah. VP of ops or whatever. I don't, you know, whatever. So it's just, they are important. They need to sound important. Yeah. But I've got, you know, like I said, I've got 30 ideas. We're not going to hit them all at once. We've actually got some pretty killer things that I, I paused, you know, to see how this goes. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, where I said I have 30 ideas in zero minutes, this person's got to do the minutes. And right. you know, I'm going to say, all right, in three months with milestones in between, we're going to monitor this. See, right. are you the right person? Are we the right people for you? And you know, because after three months, I feel like we should see signs of something. Right. And if we do that, I think we'd be just fine. Yeah. If, if we can execute on the things that I want to do, um, I think we'll be fine. I really believe that because we've had periods uh, and throughout no trouble where we've been fine. Yeah. You know, doing the things where, you know, I may have had more time. And um, so I think that's, that's what's gotten me excited because I don't have to worry about writing a check every month anymore. Right. And can actually say, you know, we're going to invest some of this money back into getting somebody up to speed because they're not going to turn it on day one. They're not going to make an impact day one. So we got to give them a runway, you know, to, to succeed. But, but yeah, so that, you know, you guys are kind of get all the exclusives, um, you know, at some <laughs> point after, first. after, after this campaign kind of settles down, um, you know, I think uh, I'm, I'm talking to a few people, but you know, I'm thinking maybe we just put it out in the trouble and say, this is what we're looking for. You know, right. send us, send us a resume. Um, oh, you're going to open the know, floodgates. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I mean, you got to put it out there. I mean, that's what, you, I mean, you, pro- I don't know, maybe you don't want somebody in the base world, but maybe you do. Like, I feel like, you know, having, I do. <laughs> right. You know, somebody who understands that environment um, and maybe already has some relationships built in the field, you know, uh, is probably the right person. So obviously they're probably already a viewer, subscriber, listener of No Trouble. So like that person is has been reading your stuff for 10 years and waiting mm-hmm. and loving every minute of it and excited to become a part of that team, you know? Yeah. Uh, I wish I I wish I was that guy, you know? I just I'm one of those people that have the 30 ideas but not zero minutes, you mm-hmm. know. Right. Yeah. Um so yeah, I think that person's out there for sure. And um, we know that person. We all know that person. Like all, between the three of us, right? We we we've met that person. Oh, for sure. So yeah, 
Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I, I mean, so, so far you're, what would you say? 75% to your goal, right? Yeah. And so, you know, I, that goal was much higher than I was going to set it to be. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and so you got to understand, man, I mean, you know, like there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff wrapped up in this guy, you know, like from like not asking to help, you know, worst imposter syndrome, you know, you can imagine like, you know, Dave's waking up saying, I really didn't build anything here. I didn't really do anything here, you know? And then, you know, it's just like, it's, it's all wound up in this, you know, <laughs> whatever I mean, you want to call this dysfunctional brain or whatever, you right. know, like there's something wrong, but um, you know, I, I set the goal at a dollar. And just to see what people would donate. Yeah. I, said I mean, the goal that's at an dollar. interesting perspective, um, but it also doesn't say what you need, you know, like right. this is what we're, I mean, you could have said a dollar with the hopes of, you know, a minimum reach of 10, right. 15, whatever the case may be. Yeah. But uh, you know, I, 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 I mean, like when I hear you say like imposter syndrome and this kind of, like not wanting to ask again, I, I feel for what you're saying. And I feel like I'm that, that way too, where the last thing I, I ever want to do is ask to borrow money for something or ask for help. And, but I'm learning and have learned over the course of my life. Sometimes, you know, people need to help you. Um, and I'm torn between like, I kind of want to like, if I'm being honest, like reach through the camera and shake you and go like, dude, what you have this thing that people cherish and 200 to 300,000 people a month, look at your shit and spend, if you add up all the minutes they've spent on your website, you know, it could equal it's hours and hours of entertainment and joy. And uh, in addition to helping those uh, those musicians get their stuff out there and which were translated to ticket sales, all, like, I think you need to be aggressive about like asking for money. I would be emailing every single band that I've ever put on no trouble. I'd be like, Hey guys, we got this GoFundMe going right now. And remember when, uh, here's the numbers, your stuff got shared 300,000 times on my website, anything you can do to help. I mean, you don't have to be a dick Dude, about it. That's but like, icky. I don't know, man. I, 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 I disagree. I have to disagree. You can disagree, but I just feel like we're talking about the survival of no trouble right now. Like yeah. you need to. Joey like, comes from the streets. You know like, what I'm saying? Jody, Jody's. Jody, yeah, Jody's from like the do streets. whatever you got to do to get it done is definitely my philosophy about yeah. things. Like, well, and I know it's like kind of cringy. And yeah. well, we are not like others where if you email us, you're suddenly on our email list. Right. So well, I don't that's even probably know. why I'm not on the email list. I didn't. Well, know I wouldn't that. know who to email. Yeah. And I'd have to go through sixteen thousand posts and figure out. Oh, yeah, we featured this guy or this lady or this band or whatever, and then sure. figure out how to contact them. We don't. We don't do that. Right. And, but and, I mean, and like, like a, I think you get the bigger idea of what I'm getting at here, though. Like, I mean, maybe not. That's not necessarily the avenue, right? But like, man, I, I really, you really have something special here, and I, like. I, you got to know that. And I, I mean, if you don't know that, like I'm here to tell you that like you have enriched my life and all the bass players across the world are going and using your site and finding new gear, finding new bands. And, you know, like I said, and then on the back end of like musicians getting the come up by you sharing the stuff that they're doing, like you're such a, a part of the bass community that, uh, I, you know, I just, I, what the one sentence I want to say to you is do whatever you have to, to keep it going, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, 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 you know, I think you're probably a smart dude. You've done it this the, the, all the way up here and you're going to find a creative way to do it. And that keeps the lights on, but also doesn't inhibit the experience of being, you know, the, the, then how you enjoy the content that you share. I think there's, there's gotta be an answer there. Uh, yeah. that that scratches both of those itches but i it's it's really difficult and hard for me to hear you like go it's hard for me to ask for help it's you know i got this like i just want to tell you like we in the base community love what you're doing we love you we love the content like don't have that don't yeah. have we want you here you are appreciated you are enjoyed you are uh, you know, a, a beacon of light that guides the base community, you know, <laughs> like, uh, 
I, the last thing I want to hear is like, I, the last thing I want to read or see is the video of Corey going like, all right, uh, as of this date, no trouble is just an archive site and there will be no updates and blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah. Oh, I feel like I'll die inside. Um, well, I, I really appreciate that, man. And I, I would have to say that, you know, leading up to it, there was a lot of doubt and, you know, but you're, you're talking to a guy who's like pulling a bunch of levers in the, in this, in the boiler room. You know, I, I, well, I do read the comments. It's more about the, the stuff. It's not about us. It's more about, I really like this video. I really hate this video. I love this space. I hate this, but you know what we we're talking about earlier. Right. Um, you know, it's hard to get, but, and like the comments, like I said, it's hard for me to say whether the comments or the money was the, the better outcome here, you know, because right, right. the comments were so, um, you know, I, I actually format and schedule every single article that goes up in the trouble. You know, and and you know, there's days where I'm like, I just I can't believe I have to do this. But yeah. I'm a I'm also afraid, you know, that somebody's gonna miss us. And and we actually, you know, even right before this, something happened that I think was also kind of instrumental, where I accidentally broke our daily email. And so oh no. What does that mean? Well, I, I paused the I paused it by accident and and didn't realize I paused it. And okay. so we started getting emails, people saying, I'm not getting the daily email anymore. And then it just kept cranking up and cranking up and cranking up and cranking up. And so I, I have this thing where it's like, and this goes, if you know the author, Seth Godin, you know, you want to be missed. Right. <laughs> yeah. If yeah. you don't do something, you want to be missed. And I mean, people were just emailing us and Kevin, me and Kevin and every email address we had, I'm not getting the daily email. Holy anymore. shit. And so I thought, okay, what the heck is going on? Cause you know, sometimes people say it and, and like they'll forward it and somebody they forward it to clicks unsubscribe because they don't want it. Right. And so it unsubscribes the person who forwarded it. Uh, Whatever. Uh, but, <laughs> but I'm like, what is, so I go and I'm like, oh my God, we paused and we ran like a week and people were like freaking out. Yeah. They that is their daily. huge. That's a huge testament to yeah. the fact that. Well, this that, happened that, about two weeks before we launched a campaign and four weeks after I had started setting up the campaign. So <laughs> yeah. it, it all came together at, at a good time where it's just like, okay, we were missed. <laughs> People <laughs> noticed they weren't getting an email for crying out loud. I wouldn't notice. You know, oh they, yeah. I mean, like I, there's so many emails that I just, like don't read yeah. <laughs> at all yeah and it, it's it's just the, the fact that because you know we're so used to getting so many different emails all the time but the fact right. that people were i've never once gone to a company and said hey where's where's that email <laughs> like i yeah. i like i i read some of them you know right. like i just don't read them a lot right. and like right. it, it it all comes down to like you know whatever clickbait su subject you know line that's in there yeah we don't and, even do that yeah it's, it's like super you know straight to the point it's like this is no trouble daily update for date you know like it's, wow it's not yeah, but I, I, I agree with mark that i get a lot of emails that i don't pay attention to and once every six months i go through and like all right i'm getting 30 spam emails a day i'm gonna unsubscribe 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 all right but yeah. but those people are trying to sell you something it will sell i mean i don't mind getting the the sale email every now and then or whatever but there are a select few emails that i would notice if they weren't coming you know that i mean i wouldn't notice it right away and it might take longer than a week for me to go like hey i haven't gotten any of these in a while um so i mean i would say i would guess that if i have a hundred emails that i don't pay attention to out of that hundred, there's probably three to seven percent that I do look forward to. Vibrators.com. Vibrators.com. <laughs> but what, now, what? 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 The reason I say this is because I feel like that's probably equal across most people, right? That mm -hmm. there's the vast majority of spam, but there's that three to maybe seven percent of emails that I would notice are missing. And you're in that three to seven, right? This is what people are saying to you. Is that like, yeah, I get a lot of spam, but 
I know when I'm not getting my no trouble email and I'm yeah. looking for it and it's not in my spam. And what are we doing? Here? Yeah. Like I'm getting, vibrators. I'm getting vibrators.com <laughs> updates every day every and they day. fucking deliver every <laughs> single day, but no trouble. What's up with that? Like, are you like, are you saying that like, you're not as <laughs> you're not as efficient as vibrators.com Corey? is that what it is and you build yeah. websites for a living yeah, well, right i'm right, seeing yeah. some swiss cheese in this story here uh, yeah for sure well this is where it gets more embarrassing i didn't notice no uh, <laughs> <laughs> well i honestly i think that's okay right i mean yeah. of course you wouldn't notice you're getting i mean i know what's in them so i just right, right. but but the whole point of me subscribing was to make sure they went out and look good right. And you I didn't are, notice. Yeah, but how many have gone out in the last 10 years, right? Like at this point, like yeah. you know what it looks like. So yeah, like, yeah. Do you have yeah. to, you don't really have to check it, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, now you do. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I'm like, did they all go out? Because we've got a bunch of different emails. And uh so and, and that matters a lot. You know, it's it's 250,000 emails go out a month, you know, that, that matters. You know, so if yes, you start that... screwing that up, <laughs> you know ouch but i like yeah that's that's a lot and i um i do want to make a point here before i forget you've been making lots of points i make all the points um kevin johnson can we when i say kevin johnson what's the first thing that comes to your mind i feel my brother just hearing his name your brother He's my brother yeah i love that man you know i just you know, this is the God honest truth. I told I've told this to anytime this comes up, there would be no no trouble without Kevin Johnson. Absolutely, you were right about that. there would not be this that we would not have been you know could become what we could become. Yeah, I, so, I was convinced that he owned No Trouble when I first met him. That was <laughs> and my you were goal, standing man. right next to him. You were standing right goal. next to him. Yeah, Dude, this happens all the time, and now it doesn't happen so much anymore because when. I was so behind the scenes and I've done this routinely in my career. I, you know, I, I, I'm not out there to be like, Hey, I gotta be famous and all this stuff. And, and you know, Kevin's not like that either, but uh, he was definitely more in the face. And and I can't tell you how many times we've been at NAM where, you know, they think I'm his assistant or they don't know who the heck I am. And, and I'm cool with that. Um, but he, you know, when we for years and years going back to the facebook thing i had 23 friends and there were like people i actually saw regularly in my family yeah i was like i'm not being friends with readers i'm not being this and that and everything else you know i was, I was mainly on facebook to watch my daughter <laughs> you know, honestly right. um right. and to monitor the the facebook page for no trouble but I, I just wasn't into like, I got to be the guy. I got to be everybody got, has to know, you know, that's why I said, you know, for those who don't, you, of you who don't me, don't know me in the video for the go for me campaign. I'm like, you know, people aren't going to know who the heck this guy is. <laughs> a lot of people think I'm Scott Devine. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of oh, people I'm going to put a clip Scott... up of that. I'm going to edit just that moment. Right <laughs> yeah. There. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, but yeah, Kevin, man, and and thank God now we live five minutes away from each other again, you know. So like, but uh, that guy, I do anything for him, um, you know. Like going to Nam with him, like we just, you know, I've I've never been upset with him. I've never, you know, whatever. He's just he's he's one of the greatest people I've ever met. Yeah. And um, I hugged you know. him the the mo the first day I met him the first time I was just like how yeah. could you not he looks, he's such I gotta, a huggable person I gotta hug this guy <laughs> yeah, yeah he is the nicest most awesome person you know I just awesome I just I can't and so uh, you know and, and and you know with with no trouble a lot of the stuff you know why I wanted to continue it was you know because it's him and me you know, right. and I don't want to, you know, just, I don't want to be the guy that like takes that away. You know? So right. you know, we've had long talks about this and, um, you know, I, I know he, he was, he was sensitive about asking for the money also. Sure. You know, he's, he's real sensitive about that, but I, I told him, you know, we're going to do rewards, you know, and we're not going to do ultimatums and, you know, 
my dorky video is going to be authentic and real. You know, it's not going to be. Yeah, you know, I think you're in the same so, location as the the. I am. Go yeah. <laughs> in the same yeah. same spot. Um, my my little office on a farm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it sounds like you know, I, you guys are headed in the in the right direction with this GoFundMe. I think it, I think it's pretty likely you're going to hit your goal here, right? You still have 21 days or whatever to to get 20. Is it a month? I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think they're like the standard is a month. I, I could be wrong. I don't know. Yeah, I thought GoFundMe can just keep running, but whatever. Oh, yeah, maybe think, it can. Yeah, well, maybe it can. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember when my dog had to have surgery and I was like, it was, it was so my, one day my dog woke up and he couldn't use his back legs. So he's like oh. dragging himself across the floor. So sad. So I take him to the vet and uh, they go, he's got like a, basically a herniated disc and the signal isn't getting into his back legs. Uh, we can try this therapeutic method that will take, you know, several weeks to start seeing any results, or we can do the surgery and the surgery is $8,000. Oh. So wow. like, and I was one of those people, you know, as a teenager, like where I would hear somebody spend, you know, five grand on their dog. It's like, you're crazy. You're crazy. Yeah. You're like, sorry. Dog. Well, it sounds like that dog's not going to walk anymore. Right. Exactly. <laughs> That's where I come from. But my dog had become, so I would bring my dog every day to base club and he was like the shop dog and he would just yeah. sit there. And I honestly, I didn't plan this, but it just so happened that it was kind of the result of it was like, you know, base club was selling high end base gear, you know, average base was probably around 2,500 to $3,500 on up to, you know, $15,000 for day or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, most of the guys who can afford that are, you know, well into their 30s, 40s, 50 years old. You know, not a young, a lot of young cats can afford high, higher price stuff. So most of these guys are married, right? And if you're going to spend three, five, 10 grand on an instrument, you got to run that across with your wife. You know, you can't just, <laughs> just spend that. Money, yeah. You know? Which general. I mean, just you got to communicate with your partner. Right. I mean, if I just spent 10 grand or five grand, I mean, I probably could, but I mean, I, I wouldn't. You know, I would go like, hey, Kendall, that's my wife. Like, I want to buy this thing. What do you think? You know, but so people would come into the shop and I felt like they, you know, always brought their wives and, and the dog was there to like keep the wife happy. Right. So like, uh, you know, it uh, used to be a guy <laughs> would walk in with his wife. The wife's like, oh, this might as well be in Home Depot right now. I do not want to be yeah. there, you know, <laughs> and hurry up, play the bass. All right, we got to go. But if I could keep the significant others happy and cheerful and everybody loves a fluffy white dog and they would pet them and you know they they would have more time to play the instrument and you know uh, significant others are more likely to say yes to that five thousand dollar purchase uh if they're in a good mood right so that was like just kind of a byproduct of having the dog so once he has this herniated disc i like call a couple friends and i'm like guys, it's eight grand. What am I doing here? And they're, every single one of them said, if it were any other dog, I would say, <laughs> put the dog down. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> but my dog, his name is the dude, but the dude, you can't, you got to do it. You got to save him. Yeah. You gotta, I mean, I brought him yeah. like, every day at the base club. He would come to the recording studio with me all the time to buddy's house. He's like with me nonstop, you know? Uh, so I, I became synonymous with uh, is me and the dog. So I ended up going like, I mean, I really didn't have the eight grand, you know, I had the money available on a credit card, but I didn't, I had to pay that credit card, you know? And that, right, so I ended yeah. up, I ended up shooting a video to put, do a GoFundMe because I felt like enough people know me and my dog together that like, I think some people would contribute, you know, I maybe not $8,000 worth, but if I did, you know, got a couple grand that would just help offset it. Uh, and I really struggled with shooting that video. And I actually shot the video 
my wife was the camera person and she accidentally kept like putting her finger over the microphone (laughs) (laughs) as I shot. So I do this whole thing where it's like, you all know the dude. I mean, the dude is in probably seven music videos, like any gig I live thing I was doing, I take him to like open mics and stuff. He's in all kinds of pay, everybody's parties, whatever. So, uh, yeah, I'm like, this is the dude. You remember him from such parties as this? And I did this like thing, and then the whole, all the audio is just like, sounds like we're in a a, a tornado, you know. <laughs> so I never reshot it, and I never posted it. And I think I, it, for me, it was like a sign, like I didn't want to do it in the first place. And then the fact that like the audio was so terrible that I couldn't share it was a sign yeah. that I shouldn't do it. And I. <sighs> I, but looking back, I wish I would have, because yeah. that was a, that eight grand probably turned into 10 by the time I paid it off on my credit card, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I should have. So I, here, here's how I thought you were going to in that story that you made 80,000 for your dog and what the heck's wrong with no trouble. <laughs> so <like> making 11. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't get it, but I, <clears throat> listen, I'll tell you what, my wife did a, a GoFundMe, I want to say for 15,000 for an album and like, no, you know, a nobody band and they got it funded. You know, I know like another buddy of mine just did one for like 30 or 35 for his next album, got it funded. Like, and they don't have near the reach as no <laughs> trouble, you know? So, uh, listen, I, I look forward to, you know, what's to come. And I hope you find the right dude or t- female to steer the ship and help you gen- you know, create those 30 things that you have written on the wall. Yeah. Uh, because yeah, I'm sure it's going to be great. I'm sure it's going to be great. Um, I don't know what else we should talk about. We should talk about his history as a fucking bass player, man. Okay. Let's go there. <laughs> bass player. Why, why are you in, involved in this? Like you, you, you know, like you, you come from a printing background, then you come from a web, you know, development background. Um, you obviously have a passion for bass because you've built one of the most important platforms for bass. What's your history as a bass player, man? So I will say this to start off, I'm a much better web guy than a bass player, but I started playing bass when I was 10 years old, double bass, fifth grade. And, you know, I think I, I, I did share a video not too long ago of like a, uh, 1970s Fleetwood Mac and um, so my parents had all this you know vinyl in the house killer stereo system my dad cranks the bass knob to 10 on every stereo he owns he just and and so I remember feeling that bass you know that vibration and I didn't know what it was I was like three or four years old but I remember it <clears throat> and you know I, I was really into music as a kid I mean like obsessive about it and so you know, the first opportunity I got was in fifth grade when the, when the teacher came down and said, who wants to be in a in music, you know, they call it strings in fifth grade strings. Right. And uh, so <clears throat> I didn't know what a bass was or a violin. I mean, I kind of knew what they were, but I didn't know what a bass was or a cello, you know. And so she had me try the violin, the viola, I'm like, no way, no way. <laughs> cello, I was like, well, that's pretty cool. And then she gave me double bass and I plucked the low E string. I was like, that's it that's that exactly it. how i started playing tuba, <laughs> tuba really? mama. that is exactly how i started my sixth grade teacher i was playing trumpet from fifth grade and then in sixth grade my teacher was just like yeah mark we need a tuba player and you know big guy plays tuba and you're a big guy and i'm like i just want to play trumpet because i'm from the south you and uh, like tuba she's player. like well why don't you play a b-flat concert scale and i'm like okay and i play the scale and i was just like oh <laughs> like you know yeah so i i totally get it yeah yeah so that you know, was like and so i uh went through i, I actually made major in music in college um and so like where'd you go to school at some point i was like i went to my last year was north texas oh shit that's a hell of a wind ensemble there <laughs> that's a hell of a music department yeah, yeah. and they threw me out <clears throat> so, oh. um, so yeah. you're not North They're Texas material. Ensemble it sucks. It Go was, back to Virginia. <laughs> it, it was it was attendance. I had a 4.0, but I, I did not attend uh, to their satisfaction. So, why didn't you attend the thing you were excelling in? 
So my, my first year, I, I lived in Texas for my high school and first year. I went to the University of Texas at El Paso my first year. And I don't know how I figured this out, but somebody said, you know, I was like, I'm going to load up on hours. So I took 18 my first semester and 21 my second when I figured 18 it was oh, too man. easy. Well, it's easy if you don't go to class all the time. <laughs> right. And so I would get the syllabus and I would figure out when things need to be turned in and what you're supposed to read and blah, blah, blah. And I would talk to the teacher and I would, they didn't have a tennis box. So I had a 4.0. I had what, what is that, 39 hours of my freshman year. <laughs> and I transferred over to Texas because I'm like, that's that's the good music school. And so I did the same. And and they told me we have an attendance policy. And remember what I said, I don't follow the rules. <laughs> and I always believed like, oh, okay, I'm going to get around these rules. Well, you know, it ended up with me in the dean's office showing him like my, my grades. And I'm like, I got a 4.0. Yeah. What am I paying for here? You know, like I'm paying to, to demonstrate I've learned, you know, why do I have to show up to all the classes, you know, and he said, you're on academic suspension for a semester. And I said, I'm never going back. And I never went back. I, I don't even have an associate's degree. <laughs> so, um, but, at, you know, around that time too, I mean, at North Texas, I was like, of course, there was like some monsters there. I mean, just monsters. And, um, and so, uh, and I would see them, they were like landscaping and, you know, they were like, they were struggling, you know, after yeah. graduating and stuff. And I was like, you know, I, I'm not down on anybody in the path they choose. You know, it's like, hey, if that's what it takes for you to do your music. I know Damien talked about that for a long time. He, he did all kinds of construction and, you know, right. and, and that was a path for him. And so I'm not saying like, that's wrong or that's bad. I just knew that's, I can't. I can't do this, you know? So yeah. um, that's why I went into graphic design because it was like, well, this is creative and it's not a desk job and it's not like middle management. And, you know, I, and I'm third generation. I always loved that too. I always loved art as much. Well, not as much as music, but right. it was, it was a big part of my childhood. So, so I felt like I could always have music and I've played out. I've, I've done all that. I'm just, you know, if I did a video and I trouble people to like, like run the mill boring, you know, um, I can read really, really well. You know, I, 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 uh, but I'm, I'm a, I'm a meat and potatoes bass player. I'm not gonna, you know, it, it, the way bass has become, you know, right. uh, just, just the videos we share. Um, it's, it's pretty, pretty well, impressive, seeing, pretty amazing. Seeing seven year olds playing Donna Lee. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, Aaron, yeah, that little awesome. Aaron, Aaron the bassist. Oh, just any of them. It's, it's amazing. Is a monster. That kid, when I saw him at NAMM, his feet weren't touching the floor when he sat in that chair. <laughs> you know, but he was, and, and I, I didn't even know it was him. I was walking down, like, who is playing that? <laughs> I turned <Right>. around. <laughs> this little Aaron. He's killing With it. the tiny little bass, you know, like this guy. Oh, man. But yeah, so I, I think... Um, you know, I've got a bunch of bases and, you know, I, I, I love it. Um, I just, I think the world needs me making websites and not, you know, necessarily recording. So I've, I've got all these charts I've written. I've got all this music I've written. Friends and family have heard it. You know, it's just real awful rough cut, like to cassette tape stuff from way back. And, but, um, but that, that brings me joy. And I, I think that's pretty cool. You know, music can bring me joy and, you know, I, I didn't want to teach, you know, that's for sure. So yeah. that was kind of the path that all my friends took and they, they went and taught and, mm -hmm. um, and that was right for them. But, but anyway, so like, but I, I, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's definitely my biggest passion in the world. It's music and bass. And, and I just had to do something with that, that, that merged, you know, what became much later, another passion, which is building websites and, and tinkering and you know figuring out stuff and you know making sure that the right things are happening and it's growing and, and all that sort of thing so it's it's kind of my lab you know you know the guys that go out and you know, tinker with their old car and fix it up over years and years in the garage so they can yep. drive it when they retire that's no trouble is my old car that i go out <laughs> the garage every night and tinker with so. right that's awesome. I mean, it's actually, I, I have a bucket list of like, I do want to restore a car one day. 
but again, it's on that list of 30 things that I yeah. still don't, yeah. have, don't have time for, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I am glad I made, I made the room for no trouble. Um, it's been hard. Uh, like I said, every day I get up, like, you know, not every day, some days I'm like, oh, I just don't want to do it. But then I think about somebody's going to miss it. And that matters. Well, well they there. fucking emailed you about it, man. <laughs> I mean, the first, yeah. I think I, within an hour, I was <laughs> texting Mark, like, Hey, what do you think about this? Like, you think, well, what do you think about having Corey on the thing? And we'll sketch, let's see what, when everybody's schedule is free. And I think that was what last Thursday or something like that. And here we are today because I felt like, you know, whatever I can do, you know, I'd like to get this podcast up in the next 48 hours, you know, and hopefully, uh, I don't know. Maybe no trouble. will share it once we post it. <laughs> I, I think we uh, have not. shared your podcast. I'm uh, sure you we probably have. have. You definitely yeah, have. You probably have. And I, don't, I think Jody is saying this particular episode. <laughs> this particular oh, I see. one I see. to help yeah. generate. So, I mean, I you know, the truth is we our numbers are pretty freaking good on this podcast uh with very minimal effort <laughs> with minimal effort we get we're number three in croatia or something like it emails all the time Wait, croatia wow. something like that so hell yeah we broke the croatian market we're like number three the here, new croatian number five sensation there, number 13 over here um are we still getting lots of downloads and listens and stuff like that so, i'm not surprised at all yeah um shit i am <laughs> well you know, i mean i well, am, I am surprised bit. about croatia i have to be honest with you <laughs> it might not be croatia I no right? idea but i don't remember where it is exactly but uh yeah funny well, thing is there's only two podcasts in, in croatia so you got us number three <laughs> <laughs> that's probably true uh, yeah i don't know Vibrators.com. Vibrators.com. <laughs> well, listen, man, that's if- a sponsor. <laughs> that's a sponsor. Well, hey, you know, when you were talking about in, in school, you were like, oh, yeah, you know, I just I, I I plucked the E string and I just loved the vibration and I put it together and I'm like, wait a minute, vibration. <laughs> and he's and he he builds websites and vibrators.com we've established is doing really well with their website traffic and their monetization. Are you? The creator of vibrators.com. Uh, we'll save that for a different podcast. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no wonder the- you live on the farm, a sex farm. <laughs> um, well, so listen, if somebody wants to donate to your GoFundMe, how would they find it? I just Googled it. So, yeah, I mean, that's really, I mean, uh, we've got a redirect. It's no trouble.com slash support. And all of the articles as well. I noticed at the bottom of it, um, as of right now, it's, it's, it has that like learn more support, no trouble. And it has mm-hmm. a little blurb and learn more. It redirects to the GoFundMe page well, yeah. as well. Go. There you go. That's uh, awesome. Well, I think we could probably wrap it up here then. I don't have anything else I want to cover unless there's something you want to cover, Corey. Good. Good. All right. Well, thanks everybody for listening to the baster. <laughs> Make sure you visit no treble, uh, dot com and also vibrators.com. Oh, wait, one quick question. Uh, and I'm sure you get this a lot, but when that fucking song all about that bass came out, <laughs> I was, I was, was it really about the bass? No. <clears throat> so, I purchased the domain eight years before that song. So I felt like, okay, I've got some proof <laughs> you know, that we're unaffiliated. But um, to this day, you remember the uh, Seinfeld ass man episode? Yeah. Dr. He Van got the, he, he got the, he got the uh, license plates by right. accident. Right. Mm-hmm. Ass, ass man. man. You remember that episode? Oh, I do. I, I never liked Seinfeld. <clears throat> oh, I, I oh know exactly. What I'm a curb about. guy. Okay. So my license plate is no trouble without the E because it couldn't fit. I wear, obviously, no trouble shirts almost every day of the week because I've got more no trouble shirts than any other piece of clothing. And I go to 7-Eleven. And if you know that episode, it's, it's a little bit like that because 
non-bass players, they have no idea. Right. And like, oh, you're that guy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All about that bass, <laughs> you know, like from the song, right? And so I get a lot of weird comments and stuff. Um, when President I'm, of the so, band club over here. <laughs> yeah. Um, I really like your shirt. <laughs> like, but like, a lot Your of fourteen-year-old fucking... girls really like. Oh, we're, I'm a fan too. <laughs> but like, even if you don't know what a bass guitar headstock looks like, like the design has a bass guitar headstock, a Fender-ish, yeah. like realm of Fender. Yeah. And how would you make the connection that that has anything to do with booty? <laughs> like. A, <laughs> Well, my license plate doesn't have that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's, no, I, uh, you know, that's true. Oh, so you're okay. I, I, I see the connection. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So just, just YouTube that because <laughs> you'll get it. But so you didn't I, share it on the No Trouble website, is what you're saying. Oh, God, no. I, <laughs> I wanted that song. I, did, I wanted that song to plummet off the charts as fast as possible. I was, I was just like, you got to be kidding me. But you and all so, had to have reaped some of the benefits of that song coming out. Like people were probably no, no, nope. All, all I've reaped was, you know, everybody for two years saying, "Oh, you're all about that bass, huh? No trouble, no trouble." You know, it was like they're everybody, even at Nam, even at Nam. I was like, "Come on, guys, you know, you're Dude, you're not gonna, supposed to do that." Oh man, Somebody the next time the I sentence. see you, uh, the next time I see you, I'm just gonna be like, "Hey man, you still all about that bass?" I'm gonna start yeah. sending some. You all about that bass, dude? Some uh, Megan Trainer T-shirts over there. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, man, if we could just have like a penny per song, like something, you know, right. we'd be rocking it. Yeah, right. that'd be a lot of yeah. pennies. That's for yeah. sure. Doing all right. So um, yeah, I've I've actually spoken publicly about the No Trouble story and um, at events, and I always put her picture right at the beginning on the slides and say, just to make everything very clear right off the bat. Megan Trainer is my this daughter. Big X, and... This big X goes over her <laughs> picture on the, it just animates, boom, you know, I'm like nothing to do with this. And so it always gets good laughs and, and all that. So it, uh, yeah, I, I was, I was devastated. <laughs> you know, it was probably a couple of weeks in and people were like, there's a song that's about your website or something. You know, I'm like, what? I had no idea. You know, I don't listen to radio. So, right. um, um, yeah, so like, real oh. quick before we go too, do you have, what's your, do you have a, like a number one bass that you play like a favorite? Um, there is one now. And do you guys know Tim Starace? Why, why not? You gotta know so. him. Maybe. Oh, okay. So um, Tim has been a guy that we featured for years. He's got this, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. They had a virtual, before COVID, because everybody was scattered, they had a virtual um, band that did Rush covers and you couldn't believe, like they just nailed it. And they're yeah. everyone's virtual. Okay. And so Tim, I can't remember how we got connected, but I like this band on or something. They're on their third, they just, they're just releasing their third, cd album with all original music and the band is just ridiculously good yeah um, so tim tim was down in florida and i was down in florida but you know not close <laughs> <laughs> um and so he he messaged me and said hey i'm going to be i lived in fort myers so i'm going to be in fort myers with this band you know you want to come i'm like heck yeah so i went over and he had this uh fender getty lee model base yeah. And he said, you want to try it out? I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, you know, I just fell in love. And he says, I got two. I'm selling this one. <laughs> so, <laughs> I didn't know. It was like, so I bought it. And um, there's just something about that bass, man. I just, yeah. um, just, I don't know. But uh, I would, I'm a, my, my number one guy was Jocko. So I was all Fender growing up. Like yeah. Fender, 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 Fender. Um, but um i've got a really nice zon i've got uh i've got that fretless ibanez um beautiful beautiful uh yeah. bass um trying to think what else got what, are you, what are you playing amp wise uh man i've got i've got some a fender a hard key a tc electronic um nothing like you know it's 
they're all decent. It's, you know, it's right. not like, I'm not going to impress anybody with my, my gear or, you know, like when we go to Nam, you know, my, my, my only base for forever was a P base. And so we go to Nam and it's like, uh, Kevin, this base has too many knobs and switches. You, you know, <laughs> you try it out first. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, you know, it, I don't, I'm not that guy, but, um, but yeah, that, that there's something about that Getty and, and, you know, Tim was like, you got to buy the crafted in Japan, the CIJ, you know, don't buy anything else. Those are the ones. And so I don't, I know there's a whole story there why, but you know, and he buys them all the time and sells them and buys them and sells them. And, and so uh, they rip, they're really good. Oh man. It's, it, there's just something about that. I, I play it live a couple of times and then the sound guys were like, what is that bass? <laughs> it's booming. Yeah. And, uh, and it's just, it's, there's, I think there's something with that neck too. Like Getty, all Getty's mods are apparently in this. This is based on a 72 Jazz, I believe. Right. Oh, yeah. And I'm uh, a sucker I've, for those block inlays. I've I, played it. Right. I've you played, played Getty's? That, I've played that 72, man. Whoo. Yeah. I'm, I know, and, and, and like, yeah, like, we'd a humble brag. Like, I'm, there ain't nothing humble about this. This is right. like, cool, oh, man. It was the best. Yeah. But then, of course, like, I was actually playing it when I met him. <laughs> like, like I, I play it. He shows up out of nowhere, and I felt like I just got caught, <laughs> you know, oh, like doing yeah, something, yeah. <laughs> like if doing something bad. But yeah, yeah dude, yeah. No. The closest I come is they Fender Custom Shop released like a mm -hmm. Getty Lee signature that was beyond like that the crafted in Japan or Mexico, yeah, yeah, that like whatever five thousand dollar one. I think we got one through Bass Club, and I think I immediately had. I think I had it sold before it even came. But I still was like, all right, I gotta get to spend five minutes with this. And oh yeah, right, right, going yeah. On here, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, so that that one I, I pull out because it's it, it's so easy to play. I mean, it's just it's butter, you know. Mm -hmm. um, right. So yeah, and they sound good. You know exactly what it's gonna sound like. Yeah, I like. I've always liked seventies jazz basses in general. That's they. Yeah, I do, except for the weight. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a sit down base. <laughs> right. I had a, sit -down. a seventy three, I think, seventy two or seventy three for a little while. Uh, it was a great base. There was I wouldn't mind getting another one again. I don't know. There's I've been like Jones and for a new base, and there's like three or four different like oh, maybe I get one of these. Maybe yeah, one of those. Uh, I just I need really to bite the bullet. Base? I need to bite the bullet. I need to get one of those like early 70s, like a 72 or 73 P base in Mocha. Yeah. Kevin Johnson's got one. Yeah. That one, or, or not Kevin Johnson. I'm sorry, Kevin Scott. Kevin Scott's got one. I was when, say, Kevin Titans. Johnson has one. I got to go over there. Yeah. <laughs> I have a 71 P, but I've kind of Frankenstein was a dumb kid. But uh, yeah. We got a 71 and a 78 P. Um, what what did you what did you do to Frankenstein? Like what what's what's wrong with it? Badass bridge. And no, no, I didn't do anything to the bridge. Demarzio. I had the frets ripped out <laughs> because I was like 14, 15, and I was a huge Jocko nerd. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, oh, I I don't want to hurt everybody. But do it. Say it. It had that it had that sunburst, and it was all it was chipped. Mm -hmm. like like Jocko's yeah. was and I was like oh this doesn't look good I'm gonna sand it all off and, uh, and refinish it later so it's it was my first base so I'll never get rid of it but it's it's just an embarrassment and a regret because <laughs> you know I had this beautiful 71 p right. next stamp 5th of February 71 I celebrated its birthday every year oh my god <laughs> Um, because wow. it was my first, you know, it took me a long time to save for an electric, um, you know, because yeah. I, I started on double bass at 10. I didn't own a bass. It was the schools. And right. So, but I wanted electric. And so it took me a while. And I think I got it when I was 14. Um, just, just, you know, kids are stupid. I was stupid, you know, just. Yeah. Messed well, there was, there was no, I mean, like, there's no real way to know. Right. I mean, I, yeah. I have to imagine like by then like an early 70s p base like there, there was no real connotation to what that meant you know right. like what was significant about that like right oh, now yeah, i paid I could, 200 bucks for it 
Yeah, right, you know? right. So like you don't this know. It's like, worth more than two hundred bucks today. You know. Even yeah, it's... even in the current state that it's yeah. in. Yeah, and like by now, shit, like refrets are so damn common on those things. Like who cares? Right. You know, yeah. it's yeah. It, even the finish thing. Like I see a base like that. I see a base that's been played that somebody made all the customized like changes to and stuff like that. And like, it's, it's like, you could see all the thumb marks and stuff where somebody like rested their thumb for ages and stuff. And just like, and you know, that thing's going to rip. I mean, that's uh, legitimately what I look for when I'm looking at instruments is like, I love the how fucked up is it? Yeah. 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 uh, Well, that's, that's what regret, what my regret is because if that thing was in the condition it was, plus this right. many years now i would look at that and go that is the most killer base ever it looks awesome you know now it's just like uh yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah i think we want well, a, a piece of gear or two that we've gotten rid of over the years yeah. i was i was recently looking at um i was on reverb and i was looking at esp explorers i had an esp explorer when i was about 15 16 years old i wanted to be james hatfield and i had the mace dual rectum finder and the rectum finder (laughs) finder, (laughs) and i had the black esp exploder is what i used to call explorer uh and i loved that instrument and it played so great and sounded so good but i you know was 18 or 20 or something and needed money and was like oh this is this is the only thing i have that's worth value and Mm. i probably sold it for 1600 bucks or 1800 bucks on ebay or something like that i went on reverb the cheapest one i could find was like 10 grand get out of here for like an old esp explorer i cannot find one under i want to say it was like 10 grand maybe eight you know it was something man. astronomical i was like man if i should have just got held on that guitar but it but you know whatever i probably i don't even know what i needed the money for probably for rent yeah. or something yeah. you know at yeah. the time uh so that's definitely a piece that value wise i regret getting rid of do go fund me man and make sure your wife doesn't plug <laughs> the microphone this time like <laughs> hey i didn't uh, ask for my dog now i want this bass real bad <laughs> well the dog is it's been about five years now and he's still doing okay he was 100 oh, percent, but yeah you never know if you should ask after that like you know was that oh yeah, yeah it was yeah. So. successful you know okay. I, I gave them eight thousand he can walk you know <laughs> okay like, all right good did all right um he was never a hundred percent but definitely you know gave him a lot of lot, like, at least another it's been like i said five years or so so he's he's cost me whatever thirteen hundred dollars a year basically mm-hmm. so the right. longer he goes the less that i've been you know it's invested. the less you're going to be able to afford that asp <laughs> right, <exactly. laughs> uh, but yeah he's getting up there he's like 13 or 14 now so yeah. he's moving slower anyway so uh. um well i think we could wrap it up we've been going for two, two hours. hours yeah uh we i just want to reiterate I appreciate you. You are valued. You are an ambassador, a beacon of light, a just all the good things, right? When it comes to the bass world. And I feel like uh, I would do whatever I can to help support, lift you up, do whatever I can, you know, help financially if I can, and hopefully get the word out there and uh, have many more years of no trouble to come. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that was the main reason I wanted to have you on here to help spread the word and let it Yeah, I, I appreciate you guys so much. Kevin said say hi for him and we love you guys. Yeah, it's been it was great seeing you at NAM. Uh, it feels like 10 years ago now, but uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I'm to, sure you'll be back you. next June, right? That's when they're doing it now. <laughs> yeah, <during laughs> that's the resounding response. When everybody's clogging up the hotels for Disneyland right right it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting well listen i will just put it out there that like uh when you decide to go let me know maybe we'll just all go in on a giant airbnb or something i did that one year fuck too it was yeah 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 we haven't probably got a book now right maybe (laughs) yeah that's the plan get a uh 
and hope that you know there's not like the next variant and everything else goes to heck right. you know too. like right. Yeah, it would be interesting to see how the next NAM is, if it's going to be all masked up or... I feel we all have to have some level of immunity. I've been to 12 NAMs. I have to have something in me. It's like right. maybe stronger. Uh, well, you know, maybe they'll pro make, you know, require proof of vaccination or something. I mean, I just went to a concert in Madison and saw Sylvan Esso um, Saturday nice. and it was, uh, you know, show your proof you got to have proof of vaccine mm -hmm. everybody saw yeah. masks and it was a thing i mean I, we're still in a room with i don't know 500 other people or whatever but, right uh, well nam's 125,000 from around the world so that's that sounds about as frightening as <laughs> anything i can imagine yeah like yeah. the sickest i've like ever been was Come after on. attending nam oh. yeah like yeah, any NAM. There, isn't there like a right. what do they call it when NAM you go thrax. to nam thrax <laughs> nam thrax yep um well listen i think we'll i i play I, it's it's almost a year out but i i hope to be there um and i hope everybody else is there and oh yeah it's, it's great to, to it. see everybody yeah oh yeah yeah for sure. I mean, that's the main reason i go i don't really walk the floor to you know do whatever you know it's not right. like sales or business it's like i go to it's like a vacation for me everybody's like are you kidding me because everybody's like oh i don't want to go to that because they're all working real hard <laughs> like <laughs> Well, you know, the yeah, base the base bash is always a great hang, right? It's all Absolutely. the players and the builders and you know, yep. I mean the last the last NAM 2020 was my first name ever, and it was, you know, I've been selling MTD bases for a decade, you know, yeah. and same with Federas and uh, you know, a lot of these manufacturers, nice stuff. Roger Sadowski, uh Jim Bergatino, and a couple guys that like I had, you know, as strong as a relationship as you could have for not meeting a person, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then to finally, you know, hang out with Daniel Tobias, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah you know, that's great. It's great. Uh, yeah. And it, uh, Ben Kenny was another cool one to hang out with him. And, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, seeing you, you know, you and Kevin, for sure. You were, uh, I don't know if you remember, but you were about eight drinks in that night at the base. <laughs> oh, so it was you were still all early. lovey dovey and hey, come here, it was buddy. still early then. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta we gotta hang out with the Labella guys, like the whole the whole crew. Yeah. Like the whole yeah. Like even 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 Richard Coco. Oh yeah, yeah the Labella guys. Yeah. And awesome. Lorenza. Dude, Lorenza's hilarious. She's so funny. Yeah, that, that whole family is is wild. And yeah. then like James Carbonetti. Yeah. Like they're they're turns out like he's their cousin. Oh really? Mm. Yeah, Jimmy Carbonetti. Yeah, dude, that guy rules. We'll be yeah, there. they are awesome people. That's that's that that's always the best part of Nam. Like, I, like yeah, we we having the luxury of having all of that gear, like being able to play that at a, at a moment's notice at working at a store. It was it, it it wasn't as exciting seeing all the new stuff. It was just exciting meeting the, seeing the people for the first time. That that's the one sense of community that's going to be missed. But uh, maybe something else will turn up out of this. Maybe we'll yeah. start to build our own thing and just yeah. Yeah, you know sure. have some big cool event just for bass players and get all those people in the same room and get into a bunch of trouble. Who knows? Or no trouble. <laughs> No trouble. <laughs> well, I'm starting small. We are. You mentioned John Ferreira. He's going to play here at the farm on January 15th. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I saw, I saw him recently. As soon as we like, saw hey, that, he posted concert. that. I'm like, dude, any chance you're going through Virginia? And he said, I'm playing in Richmond on January 15th or 14th, 16th or something. I'm like, book me. Nice. So, I, you know, I was like looking at that, like, man, I'd love to host John, but I can't do it at my house. Like, I, you know, it's, I get one of those 30 things that like, I know I could pull off if yeah. you know, I had the energy or the time to do it. Um, I think it would be a you know, real cool thing to shoot video of and record. Yeah. And I've done that a bunch with John already. Uh, but, you know, well, I'll have him on the podcast when he, you know, next time he comes through, because I definitely been watching. I don't think they have any Chicago dates yet, but they always yeah. come through and yeah play chicago so we'll get him on the podcast yeah we'll i'm pumped i'm pumped yeah it should be he, that's the I, I mean also like his it's been it's been nice to watch his evolution of his like tapping abilities mm -hmm. um i mean he was always talented and very good at it but like he's just every time i see a new video he posts out it's just a little tighter a little cleaner a little mm -hmm. like expanding on it you can tell he's doing he's like really 
like focus practice and doing re- like a lot to just expand and push that style of playing you know and yeah. uh, the stuff he does with seth uh who's doing his like the percussion side of things and the drum stuff is really cool he's you know got that getty lee uh, playing with my feet and with my fingers and he's got that new bass that double neck bass that he's been doing some stuff with that looks really cool so uh yeah he's he's definitely a, a favorite. yeah just a video he used to announce it and it was like it was or- orchestral yeah it was just like unbelievable and i, I thought well Kevin will be here. I'll be here. There'll be two guys with their jaws on the floor, and then everybody else is going to have a good time. Yeah. Well, listen, if you can, like, live stream it or something, yeah. or do what you can, I, you know, I, yeah, I'll ask I was closer, I'd that. be there to, like, be your tech dude or whatever. Yeah. Um, but, uh, well, listen, if you also, I, if you ever have some crazy idea that you think the bass nerds could help out in any way, you know, obviously we're, we're on board to do whatever we can to be a part of the team or do a pot. If you got someone that knows someone coming through Chicago that should do this podcast, let's do that. If you just yeah. have some creative idea of like, whatever, let us yeah. know and, and we'd be happy to be a part of it. So and vice versa. I, I'd love to pick you guys brains and, you know, help you guys out too. Um, you know, I know you guys are, I think you probably have some ideas, um, but, or know some people or whatever. So I, yeah. I'd love to, it, it's just a matter of, of time. Is, it's just a matter of time. Yeah. Yeah. It comes down to like, just, uh, you know, having two kids running, you know, running point for a company and right by, by yourself. And then Jody being a contractor and everything. It's just, just, yeah. it's just a matter of timing. This is fun. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, this, this is the best. We just get to talk to people we like. Yeah. This is yeah. easy. This and is yeah. Nice <laughs> you know, this is yeah. Cool. And now the weed's legal here, it's even better. Hey, I took a couple chocolate covered blueberries before we started and uh, I'm feeling good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm feeling good. Well, Corey, man, thank you so much for talking to us yeah, today and great. divulging all that stuff. Uh, just uh, just another reminder, it's no treble.com. Go to their uh, their their page. There's a special page for their GoFundMe. Of course, like, we've been pro- no uh, promoting that. slash support, right? So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, if you want to engage with them more, community.notrouble.com. Um, you could, you know, write all sorts of comments. Just keep it base related, please. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you again. Yeah, thanks, dude. I appreciate so, you guys. So appreciate thanks it. so much. Awesome. Great hanging Take care, out. buddy. We'll wrap you it too. there.